Polly Muse, Polly Muse, how are you? How are you? We're here in the Polly Muse studio. The voice you're hearing is the voice of Ben. I will now allow transmission from my co-host Michael. Michael, come uh, in, Michael. Uh, uh, I'm here, but I'm feeling here? Lo- feeling a little sad. Oh I'm man, a little sad today. Dude, statues are always sad. Oh, depends on how they make the face. If they make it a sad face, it's a sad face. Mm, We're doing sad, sad statue. Face. We're also doing old school Hollywood baseball on the System of the Down podcast on Poly Muse Radio. How's it going, guys? Good. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the old school Hollywood baseball. It's the sad statue liberty. Uh, this song has problems. <laughs> <laughs> the statue has problems. The verses terrible. The verses are like the riff is so generic. It's like a Foo Fighters song. The Foo Fighters, you can sing any chorus to <laughs> any true. Foo Fighters song. That's so true. You sing the words from any Foo Fighter chorus over a different Foo Fighter song. It always works. That's... So we were listening to Sad Statue. You can put. Radio video, you can put Revendra, you can put Violent Pornography, you can put BYOB. All of them fit mm-hmm. to the exact riff. So that's terrible writing. That's, that's just rough. And it's, it's one thing to have like your style where it's identifiable, and then it's another thing to just reuse. Reuse the same thing. The chorus is awesome, though. Beautiful. It's just they go, they're like, well, let's put the most generic verse possible so that they know it's a system of a down song. Yeah. They could have just... But we have real words. There are real words. There's real writing. And it uh, could be relative to you and me. We'll all go down in history with a stad Statue of Liberty and a generation that didn't agree. Could be referring to policies. Could be referring to social structure. Again, normal things that System of a Down talks about. Political. Sometimes tyrannical. Sometimes liberal. But here, again. Sometimes hypothetical. That's right. Sometimes yeah. visual. Visceral. Sometimes cerebral, where it's in your brain, mental. It's about how Statue of Liberty means something and is a promise, but now it's sad because it sees how what? Well, there could be a discussion about tyranny, but mostly about uh, disagreement in in history. You could cer- certainly interpret that. What is in us that turns a deaf ear to the cries of human suffering? There's also been uh, parallels pulled from that from the Watchmen comic book series as okay well. don't know exactly what quote that would be but yeah Rorschach <laughs> talks like that yes definitely talks like that he's always condemning society and saying these are the evil ones and these are the good ones let's get rid of the terrible ones that's what he does dude yep. he's a vigilante he thinks he knows right from wrong and he this is in Watchmen I mean you go in, it's all philosophy right it's all the different superheroes are like the different responses to to good versus evil so rorschach he just he murders people man and he thinks he's that he's righteous for that like he does he just is jur- jury and exit he's like batman the old batman that just killed people he's like oh you're guilty you will now die and that you know to him that's justice to him that is his philosophy of right and wrong of of who gets what basically and they're just individual people individual heroes But they represent, you know, an entire philosophy or an entire, if you put it towards countries, it'd be like, oh, this is a fascist country. This is a free country. This is this. This is that. How they approach some of these things. Even, I mean, you know, systems always talking about the prison system, uh, all these different, it's like, is it fair? How do we, how do we stay safe? But how do we, but they also imprison people for nothing. Yep. So a lot of complex issues, and this is one kind of similar. The st- statue, again, being the Statue of Liberty and uh, the grieving over different disagreements over a number of different political climates. But it's as awesome. We, yeah. The harmony is beautiful. And we don't have Darren stepping on Surge. No, they complement each other beautifully, and it sounds very good. They both fit together instead of be redundant, like they needed two vocalists. For this one, like it actually works. They use the, both of their strengths instead of just both doing the same thing. And we get a lot more singing on this album in general, I think, more so than previous albums as a full project. There's probably less screaming and growling and stuff. Like as their discography goes along, they use that less. So there would probably necessarily be more singing. I'm not sure. I don't want to say it's a sign of maturity because it's certainly not yeah they're not mature certainly (laughs) the cocaine fish song was on this album (laughs) it's certainly a a a choice that was made yeah 
it's more polished it's more yeah. accessible I, this probably wasn't what was going through their mind necessarily but you can be aggressive without going into that territory or whatever but this is a different vibe this is more this one kind of sounds like musical theater or something like almost where it's the right. different characters the different parts is that level of drama and this one makes sense dude i don't want to hear it's the level of drama is the same he's saying danny and lisa versus <laughs> he's saying the whole statue of liberty is crying for the soul of america that's the problem with the radio video song it's because they're both on the same level of intense drama and like one of them is like about society and and everything and one of them's about like a five year old yeah but that's not what we're doing we're doing sad statue let's hit it sad statue sad statue other songs stuck did you be head. did you ever be at the statue of liberty i have actually never been there you never been to ellis island you've been yes i have been more than once i went as a tourist as a admirer as a lover i actually worked <laughs> right there on the river i could see the statue of liberty from my yacht that i took care of the mega yacht mega yacht oh yeah that's a different story though she wasn't sad when i was there no. she wasn't crying i mean maybe she was but i felt free i did not feel oppressed at that moment in time i felt like i could do anything in life that i wanted no conflict on the yacht it was i mean i i could have gone anywhere I, I was connected to the whole universe at that point and that in and of itself is crippling because then it's like what do i do <laughs> yeah but it's it's liberty, man. Statue of li li whatever you want to do, you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we certainly have that in the first verse here. Conquest to the lover and your love to the fire. Permanence unfolding and the absolute forgiveness is the ultimate sacrifice. Eloquence belongs to the conqueror. Going back to that strong writing, at least in that particular part. I like that. It's more, yeah, it's better than Danny and Lisa. and Yeah, well, we'll get to that. Another one of those types of songs in a minute. There is another one. What did you grade, sad statue? How about a B plus? That's solid. It, it didn't deserve it, but <laughs> it squeaked by. It squeaked by. Uh, okay, you gave it a B plus. How about a B? I want to roll it back. We'll give him a B. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it a B minus, so I guess we're more aligned on this track. It's... I don't like that the verse is like completely redundant, but the chorus is so good. Yeah, I, I agree with that piece. Yeah, I don't like that it sounds the same as a few of the other tracks in this in, in that one portion. And uh, I, again, we have some real words here, and we have some great euphemisms, and we have some great sort of imagery, and also you can kind of take pieces that you want from it and apply it to different uh, conflict or struggle. Just not, not Let's quite go B minus for me. I'm reevaluating. Yeah. I'm re. We're splitting hairs here. A couple but... of B minuses. Okay. Well, let's tackle another song. Like I said, the kind of thing we don't get very often from System of a Down, but tackling kind of a personal story here in old Hollywood. The, yep. This is a real story with real names. Somehow this one doesn't bother me as much. This is a. This might be the weirdest song. On a on a system of a down album, this is a very weird song. We'll play it for him. Should yeah. we hit him with the hit him with some some old school Hollywood? It'll speak for itself. Here we go, dude. That is a weird song. That robot voice. There's a lot of stuff. There's like a this different is a, sounds that you've never heard in system. Yeah, very unique piece. Weird. I would say. Very spacey. Very out there. It definitely puts an image in your mind. I just imagine some sort of if there was a music video, kind of an outer space baseball game to kind of go along with this. An old school one. Yeah. Do you have the story of what the heck they're talking about on this? I do. Uh, Darren participated in the 45th Hollywood Stars Night at Danger, Danger, Danger Stadium. <laughs> at Dodger Stadium out there in L.A. for the Los Angeles Dodgers baseball team, of course. Tony Danza, Frankie Avalon were two of the stars there that participated in that event as well and of course they're long past their prime and that's why you know these connections are kind of made to the baseball event that those two participated in and darren was there as well so kind of loosely bringing all those threads together from that event now not a lot of writing here no old school hollywood yeah baseball but it's a hook though you remember it it's it's catchy it's a meme it's someone starts saying you say the rest of it yeah old school hollywood baseball yeah <laughs> I know it's catchy. It's a it's repetitive. It's a meme. Not it repetitive. Sure is repetitive. As annoying, dude. This is a this is a good one. 
It rocks. They kick in when he when I love the back and forth because it's got Darren as the weird. He's like Tony Danza cuts in line, and then but when Serge pops in with the chorus, it's just so powerful and so clean and so just like in your face. Like this is good. This is punk rock. This is like new wave, new metal, punk rock. It's right up my alley. I get, uh, I know I slagged on the Johnny and Lisa thing because it was talking about real huh. people. Yeah. But in the, this, it's different when it's like they're making fun of like a celebrity or something because it's, they're not real people. They're like talking heads on TV. It's like talking about the stars and the moon and the sun. That's well, why they call them stars. Talking about people they come that out you at know. night. Yeah. Well, yeah, he doesn't know Tony Danza. Well, we don't know Lisa. Darling, and... your teeth are like stars. They come out at night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's also like 20 words in here that aren't old school or Hollywood. And yeah, yeah. And they're mostly people's names. Yeah. It's a gimmick song. It is. It's a joke song. But they do some fun experimenting here, some sounds that they don't usually do. Again, memorable, catchy. Yeah, yeah. memorable. Yeah, I don't know that I'm spinning it too often. This is an easy A. (laughs) Easy A. It rocks. I think of this one a lot, dude. I think of this one a lot. When I think of Mesmerize, I'm like, they got that old school Hollywood oh. baseball, don't they? Oh, I thought like, you could see. You think about it a lot when you think of Tony Danza. I give it a... I mean, that's my main point of reference for Tony Danza. I mean, <laughs> some of these guys, we did not grow up with Tony Danza, but we grew up with... Or Jack Gillardi. I mean, remind me who that is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know Tony Danza. Not off, not. I mean, I know he's in old school <laughs> Hollywood baseball. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, you know. Oh, well, I give it a B minus. That's the thing about this old school, whatever, whatever. They think everybody knows everything, but culture changed so much and so fast that it's like nobody has the same point of reference for anything. Nope, they sure don't. Yeah, I give this one a B minus, just like Sad Statue. Just to cut above a few of the C songs I've been giving on this album. A song that I certainly wouldn't go searching for necessarily. It's hanging on there at that B level. This is like the bounce or the shimmy of Mesmerize. It's a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that lands. It's a meme. It's something that you remember, gets stuck in your head. I mean, like when you say, if I did hear Tony Danza, I, my brain would start going old school Hollywood, washed up Hollywood. <laughs> like that's... It's just stuck in there. It's that catchy. Yeah. What uh speaking of Hollywood baseball, Jack Gillardi's Ten Feet Tall, what were the movies that came out this year? The movies that came out this year. Let's touch on them here. So we had a few superheroes going on at this time. Batman begins. Mm, that's the best one. Yeah, that is the best one. We had Star Wars episode three. Really? We did. That is that's weird. I okay. know, right? It's weird that it took them that long to do number three. <laughs> it doesn't it? Yeah, I, I remember being I like in kindergarten when ep- how long between episode one and episode three? It took it took a hot t- it took a hot minute there. We also had the uh, Harry Potter going on. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire was the number one movie in the box office, I believe. Ooh, the Ridge, the Ridge. That's a good one. Charles and the Chocolate Factory. Mr. and Mrs. Smith was big at the time. That was where Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie were married spies for opposite sides, but didn't know it until they had like hits on each other. I feel like we saw that in theaters. I feel like I saw it in theaters and I feel like I saw it with you, but maybe not. That could be. I think I saw it in theaters. Yeah, it's certainly a fun, rewatchable movie. And they got married after that. It's one of those where like the two mega stars got married afterwards (laughs) and then adopted a bunch of children. That's how that went. (laughs) Wedding Crashers, nice classic. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, also a classic. Classic. Hostel Two. We might have watched that. We had a we had a period of time where we used to watch horror movies together. <laughs> Horrible movies together. <laughs> that was certainly. I don't think I saw Hostel. Saw Two, maybe. Oh yes. Oh, Sorry. Saw Two is burned into hostel. my retinas. When he throws that girl on the pile of needles, I will never forget that. Oh yeah. Never. Well, now I remember that too. Yeah, first hostel, second saw. I got I got my numbers, numericals mixed up here in my uh, notes, but that's what I have. So those are some of your top movies. Madagascar also came out. Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah, that's a big year though. I mean, that first Harry Potter and the first Batman and all that. That's insane. Yep. So some some bigger movies there, most certainly. 
You want to hit some sporting events real quick? I know it's not. You got some baseball. Not quite up your alley. Well, is no, it old school Hollywood baseball. Old school Hollywood. Well, the Patriots did win a Super Bowl uh, for Tom Brady, his sixth, well, his second at the time, I should say, second Super Bowl in a row over the Eagles. He's won sixth as of the time of this recording. We're in Michigan here, and the Spurs won the title in 2004. In 2005, they lost it to the Spurs, so their nice little run came to an end. But Tom Brady, who was a legend in his own right, went to Super Bowl that year. And the Pistons' little run comes to an end, unfortunately. We did have Lance Armstrong winning Tour de France. Yeah, cheat. But he was still at the top of the world at that time. Roger Federer and Venus Williams winning Wimbledon, also still at the height of their powers at this time. Tiger Woods won the Open Championship, while Phil Mickelson won the PGA. So just a few things to put in perspective there. As far as baseball, it was actually the Chicago White Sox that won the World Series at that time. So just a few things to put in perspective there. But yeah, the Lance Armstrong thing in particular, now that he's been stripped of all of his uh, medals, is worth Certainly uh, the time capsule here and looking back. Yeah, that's kind of a moment in time that ended for him. Yeah, unfortunately. Guys, we got one more episode of 2005. We've got Mesmerize wrapping it up. Then we'll hit you with Hypnotize after that. System of a Down going strong. Holly Muse, and we're out. Out. We outie 5,000. We outie.